excited to be here with you all amongst esteemed colleagues and friends and people that I'm getting to know here to tell you a little bit about what we're up to and our manager programs at Google and how we're using empathy and compassion, how we're helping to cultivate uh, empathy and compassion in our managers. So many of you, when you think of Google, you might think of something like this, right? A fun college-like atmosphere where there's slides and bikes and people are napping or whatever it is you're, you associate with Google, okay? Uh, but in truth, we aim to hire people who can make a big impact in their roles and in the world, uh, people like my colleague Ming. And oftentimes, people's careers at Google can include taking on a people manager role. Um, but the thing is, it's not easy to manage people at Google. It's not easy to manage people who are driven, smart, innovative, and independent thinkers, right? In fact, it's really, really hard. And oftentimes, what works at other companies or in other domains doesn't work at Google. So my job, in part, is to really figure out how to develop managers at Google. And again, the mission of our team is that every Googler has a great manager. And I hope, my genuine hope, is that great management is one of the chief perks that Google will be known for above all of these other awesome benefits. So I'd like to uh, take a moment to introduce you to our new manager flagship program. It's a program that all of our new people managers go through. And it's a 100-day program with some e-learning in the beginning. We bring then together Googlers for about three days in a classroom, about 35 Googlers together in the classroom. And then we follow that three-day experience with an online uh, learning cohort experience. I want to walk you through one of our activities that's called Why Manage, OK? In the classroom, we do it with post-it notes and flip charts and small group conversation. But today, just to give you a little bit of a taste, we're going to have you do it as a thought experiment. So go ahead and close your eyes and think of the best manager you've ever had. OK, so close your eyes. What were they like? How did they build trust with you? How did they help you? How did they help you when you struggled? How did they support you in your development? How did they gain your trust? Make a mental list and take note of how you feel right now. So go ahead and reopen your eyes. And I'd like you to turn to a partner very briefly and just share with your partner the three words, the top three words that come to mind when you think of your best manager. Go ahead. Just a brief moment. OK, so back at the front of the room. By show of hands, how many of you felt that your best managers demonstrated empathy and compassion to you at some point along the journey? Wonderful. The purpose of this thought experiment was to remind us all the powerful impact, the powerful positive impact that managers can have on us. And even the best workplace perks wouldn't be enough to outweigh the impact of a bad manager. So again, our emphasis on really training managers to be the best managers they can be. In 2009, we were really curious about what makes a good manager at Google. And we were actually even more curious about, do, do good managers really have better results? Do they have more productive teams? Do they have lower turnover? And we approached it from a skeptic's perspective, trying to actually disprove 
that managers mattered. The good news, in fact, is that we found out that managers do matter. The best managers have lower turnover, have higher performing teams, and happier teams. So then you might be wondering, well, what were the eight attributes? Uh, eight, as in the oxygen uh, atom, what were the eight attributes of the best managers at Google? Well, I'm really excited to share with you the eight attributes. Is a good coach, empowers the team, and no surprise to all of us in this audience that expresses interest and concern for team members' success and personal well-being was one of the chief attributes of what it is to be a great manager. And I was personally heartened when I saw this because I thought, yes, this is awesome. Um, again, productivity, being a good communicator, career development, vision and strategy, and not, and surprisingly to some of us when we were doing this research, technical skills was amongst the lowest um, in terms of items mentioned. So really exciting to see that express interest and concern is among the top three. So our job in our manager development programs is to really think about how we can train these skills, these behaviors in our managers. Again, turning back to our new manager flagship program, there's several ways that we think about training empathy and compassion in our managers. One of the areas that we do um, focus on is on well-being. We have a module on how do you manage member, team members' well-being. And not surprising, one of the things that we tell managers is your own self-care. And we use the oxygen mask analogy, which most of you are familiar with if you've ever flown on an airplane, that you have to put on your own oxygen mask first and then assist others. So we talk to our managers a lot about role modeling healthy well-being for their teams and for themselves. Other ways that we incorporate empathy into our practices on coaching, for example, in our coaching module, before we put people into coaching practice, we have them do an empathetic listening activity so that they can start to develop those good listening skills. In our, in our delivering feedback module, we have them practice the delivering feedback in a variety of ways, in trios, so that they can gain empathy for what it's like to be on the receiving end of that feedback, which is what their direct reports are on the receiving end of. Um, in addition, well, I'll end there. I'd like to turn now and talk to you about a new program that we've just started in the last year called the Whisper Course on Coaching Effective One-on-Ones in Team Meetings. And I'm really excited to tell you about this program and how we use it to train empathy uh, because it's a new approach um, that you might not have seen before. So I'm just gonna take a second to walk you through it and then um, talk to you about how we use it to train empathy. So the way a Whisper Course works is you get an experiment in your inbox, okay? You're enrolled into a global cohort Right now, tw uh, managers from 27 countries across Google, are, or across the world, but at Google, are enrolled into Whisper courses. So you get an experiment in your inbox, okay? The experiment is very brief. It's something that's whittled down to the most simple words that can fit on even a post-it note. So you can just jot it down and take it into your next one-on-one -on -one or team meeting. You try the experiment that week in your team meeting and one-on-one, -on -one figure out how it went, see what happened, and then you fill out a look back form and discuss with the global alias, the global group, about how those experiments went. So let's go ahead and look at some of the, a couple of the experiments. This is the first one. As you begin your one-on-ones and meetings, ask your report, what's the one thing I could do to make this time most valuable to you? Hundreds of Google managers have conducted this experiment in their one-on-ones. And these are some of the results. And as you can see, it got a five-star rating by the participants. By asking this question, I was able to show how much I cared about the report and our one-on-one. -on -one. They appreciated that I asked and opened up a bit. More about areas that I could support them with, I will make sure I always take the time to ask them and to give the space and support to share. The questions itself make me more mindful of their needs. I'm personally just very heartened to see people opening up and practicing their generous listening. 
Uh, here's our second experiment where we're using it to train empathy. During your one-on-ones and team meetings, restate a bit of what you've just heard and then ask, tell me more about that. Simply tell me more about that. Give ample time for their response. Aim for listening 50% of their time that you're in, an, in this meeting. And here are some of the participant responses. It's an incredible way to open up the conversation and give space to them and to share more about how they are feeling or what the situation is or what they should do. I will continue to use this language. A lot of openness and personal, about personal and professional struggles. And for one employee, tears of gratitude. I was surprised by how much dimension was added to the conversation by asking this question. Very powerful. And lastly, this is my favorite comment from the participant of a Tell Me More, which is, the more silent I am, the more I learn from the other person. And it was when we saw this comment, when our team saw this comment come through, we were like, oh, we're so excited. <laughs> we were like, if everyone can get this, this is the gold, this is the gold. So um, I'm personally just really excited about the emphasis on generous listening and what our managers are reporting from opening up and giving that space to understand. Because as managers seek to understand and get to know their employees, they can ad then adapt to their styles. So all of our programs, both new management and in the Whisper courses, it's all focused on understanding your employees and then being in service to them. Oftentimes, our, we have something called the Great Manager Award, and when we interview our Great Manager Award winners, they always talk about being in service to their team as their number one priority. And these are great ways, little practical tips of how to do that. So lastly, I want to tell you about my story, which I think Min shared with you yesterday, and talk to you about why I think it's so important to cultivate empathy and compassion in managers. Well, as it turns out in my story, which, which was shared yesterday, it's not, always, you know, it's not always something that people are excited about, to embrace compassion, to embrace being a supportive manager, a caring manager, as something that we associate with strong leadership. Uh, just the other day when I was, you know, when we were talking about Lee Kuan Yew, we were talking about tough leader. I wanted to be known as a tough leader too when I became a new manager. But what I realized through the process of really having a high performing team now for a couple of years is that I need to embrace my compassionate instincts. I need to embrace my empathetic instincts and lead from that and be proud of it. And we want all of our managers who walk into our programs to really be proud of their empathetic and compassionate instincts because that's the way that's the ticket to high productive teams, high performing organizations, especially in a culture like Google where people are innovative, smart, and driven. So that's my call to action to all of you to really embrace your instincts and hopefully we can create compassion and empathy as kind of the new buzzwords of what it is to be a strong leader. Thank you. <laughs>